Hey, my friends in Salem, Illinois. My name is Jeff Yaldin, celebrity teen and family life coach. I'm the author of Your Life Matters, and I'm a suicide prevention expert. I'm also a youth motivational speaker. I travel all over the world working with teenagers, schools, educators, and families about teenagers today. I've been uh, contacted by your community, and someone has shared with me the unfortunate circumstances that have plagued your community. And just today, I got off the phone with Mr. Stephen Phillips, the principal at South Central and a friend of mine, and he shared with me and elaborated on more. So as I come to you to offer my prayers and thoughts, I don't claim to know all the details, but I want to just stop by and I wanted to, if, if I may, just offer a couple words of thought. To each and every single one of you, especially all the families and friends that are really involved, teachers, administrators, friends, coaches, I'm sorry. And I share with you my thoughts and prayers. And I want you to know my thoughts and prayers will continue to be with you throughout the summer. I know we've dealt with the loss of lives by suicide. And I know that we've dealt with the loss of lives by vehicles, whether it be a drunk driver, whether it be the early morning fog in the area. I'm sorry. And I know for each and every one of you, we have so many questions. Why us? Why now? Why so much? And these questions may never be answered. You know, as someone that deals with death and suicide and loss every single day, I was telling Mr. Phillips, and he even said to me on the phone, he said, excuse me if I break down. This is just something that's really hard that the whole community is going through. I know that his son was one of the passengers in the car. His son was fortunate to be able to walk away with minor scrapes while two, three feet away, somebody was killed. It hits home when it's so close. You know, my friends, life is not fair. Life will never be fair. And life doesn't make sense. And I don't want to be insensitive. By all means, I don't want to be insensitive. And I know today you had one of the last services. So as we laid a life to rest, we pick ourselves up and we... We have, to, we have to move forward. And I want each and every one of you to want to move forward. And in moving forward, we have to grieve and we have to go through the grieving process. And that grieving process is different for everybody. There's no timetable. There's no speed in which you go through it. I want each and every one of you, especially the teenagers who can't control their emotions as well as adults that simply just because of maturity, I want them to understand that it's okay to be angry, it's okay to yell, but to channel that anger and that yelling into something constructive is, is what I hope you do. Maybe it's we, we go home and we punch a pillow, not a wall. We go home and we yell into a pillow, not at our parents. We have to go through that, and if we can go through that together, I think that's even more healthy. Mr. Phillips said that as a community, everybody has been really awesome to one another, and everybody has really pulled together. Well, that's what we would expect. And to each and every one of you, I hope that you continue to rally around one another. You continue to support each other, the families, friends. And, and let me share with you one other thing. To the school that might be dealing with the loss of teenagers, please understand that no certificate or master's degree ever teaches an administration or a teacher how to move forward from loss. And when this happens in the summer, it's much harder because what we might expect of them to do, they can't do. So let me just say this. Let's not judge them on what they're doing or how they're doing it. Let's support them. Let's support everybody. 
and let's all move forward together as one that if there's anything that can be done let's not point fingers and say this person or that person should be doing it i think it takes a village to raise a child and i think we as parents and teachers and coaches when you see kids on the street you maybe stop and you say hello and make sure that they're doing okay and to all the young people out there who have so many questions that might be dealing with this pain remember these words there's going to come a time in your life where you're going to lose your ego and you're going to open your heart. And for young people, I hope that you lose your ego now and open your heart. And when you have trusted adults in your life that you can talk to, go to them. I think we also need to separate within the questions that we have a life taken by suicide versus a life taken by car accident. There's nothing that I can say or do about the car accidents other than to say that driving a car is a privilege that comes with great responsibility. When it's a drunk driver that hits the car and takes the lives of our people, that is so very unfortunate. And I'm truly sorry and I wish I had words that can heal your hearts, but I don't. When it comes to suicide, that's something that I deal with. That's something that I'm an expert in teaching young people and teaching teachers how to deal with young people that might be in pain. I want to say that young people are on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The speed of hurt for young people, not just young people, but just the past two days I've been dealing with adults, adults that have children, and both of them have said that they're just tired of being tired. Suicide is not the answer, my friends. Suicide is not the solution. There is hope. But you have to be willing to do the work. I deal with depression myself. I deal with anxiety. I'm diagnosed with bipolar type 2 and PTSD. One of the things that I've come to learn to do is not to live my life with expectations because expectations only bring disappointment but I, I focus on the objective and the objective every single day is that when I wake up I choose my life today and I choose my attitude and I choose the choices that I'm going to make and one of the things that I'm most proud of in my life is that there was a time when I asked for help and so with talking to a therapist and medication I think I'm the healthiest that I've ever been in my 25 years of counseling so I want to invite all of you, not just our teenagers, but our parents to understand the pain that teenagers are going through today. And I think there's a lot of things that contribute to it. I think cell phones, as great as they are, they often uh, come with this burden. I think social media, as great as it is, I think there are young people that are finding their lives to be inadequate when they're comparing their lives to other people's lives. I think we should all slow down and understand that there's many expectations, but a lot of the expectations, the severity of them, we put on ourselves. Let's stop and remember what truly is important. And that's that we wake up every day with people who unconditionally love us and we unconditionally love them. And that there are tough times in life and tough times don't last, but tough people do. And so every single day, I want you to wake up and choose your attitude. I want you to choose the right choices and do the right thing. And when you have pain, you need to talk to someone. Remember, mental health isn't an individual issue. It's a family issue, and it's okay to ask for help. So my friends in the Southern Illinois area in Salem, Illinois, I wanted to introduce myself, and I wanted to share a couple words, and I just wanted to say... It's going to be okay. I know for maybe your administrators or teachers or people in the community that might sound insensitive if they were to say that. But I'm an outsider and I deal with this every day. And for each and every one of you, if you all get that same attitude that, you know what, we've all been through hardships and tough times and we've all kind of, we've, we've walked through it and we've come out the other side. 
well, you know what? You're going through some tough times right now. And if, if you walk through it, we're going to come out the other side. And so what we need to do is we need to grieve now. We need to go through it at our pace. And we're going to come out the other side and we're going to be okay. I'm praying for each and every one of you. I'm sorry for what you've all been going through. I know it's hard. I know it's not fair. I know it's, it's, we're left with questions that may never be answered. But we're going to be okay, my friends. I'm praying for each and every one of you. Stay strong. Stay together. Give hugs. Give love. And if we haven't learned yet, let's learn now. Situations like this make us realize what's important. So if you're living with any pain in your heart, let's let go of that pain now. Let's learn to forgive and love as quickly as we judge. I hope my words may have touched your heart a little bit. God bless each and every one of you and know that I'm thinking of you. Take care.